Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Environmental Sciences. Video 33, it's on stratospheric ozone, or good ozone. We call it good because it protects us against ultraviolet radiation. This person's skin doesn't look like it has much damage, but if we look at it with UV radiation, you start to see blemishes, freckles pop out right away. And if you were to take a picture of my face or somebody who's much older than me, there's going to be more damage due to ultraviolet radiation. So we should wear sunscreen. What sunscreen does, you can see it on the left side of this person's face, is absorb that ultraviolet radiation protects us from the ravages of ultraviolet radiation. Thankfully, our planet is wrapped in sunscreen. It's wrapped in this ozone layer. Protects us especially from UVC radiation. Why is that important? Well, until we had an ozone layer on our planet, until we had an appreciable atmosphere, life couldn't exist on land. All life had to be in the oceans. But once we had the ozone layer, it protected us. The problem is with industrialization, we started to produce chemicals like CFCs. They release chlorine into the atmosphere, and what they do is they they destroy ozone. So this is a simulation of what would have happened if we didn't stop using uh, these CFCs over time. This is a NASA prediction. So you can see here on the bottom that over time by 2020, by 2040, by the time we get to 2060, essentially all of that ozone is gone. All of that protection is gone as well. And so ozone is simply oxygen. Instead of being oxygen, diatomic oxygen, two atoms of oxygen, it's actually three atoms of oxygen connected together. It's found in two layers in our atmosphere. In the troposphere, we call that the bad ozone because it leads to pollution. Smog, for example, is produced through ozone. But what I'm talking about is the good ozone, the stratospheric ozone that forms the ozone layer that protects us on this planet, protects us from ultraviolet radiation. Now, some of that gets through. Uh, that ultraviolet radiation is ordered from A to B to C in ascending energy and also descending wavelength. The UVA radiation moves right through the ozone layer, but this is not too damaging. If you've ever looked at a, bla a black light, that's UVA radiation. Most of the UVB is filtered out and all of the UVC, the most damaging type of ultraviolet radiation, is filtered out by the stratospheric ozone. The nice thing about that UVC radiation is that when it's hit, regular oxygen forms ozone which can then be broken down again so we have this nice feedback cycle as long as the Sun is shining as long as we have ultraviolet radiation we're producing ozone to protect us the problem is we started producing chemicals like chlorofluorocarbons which released chlorine into the atmosphere and what it does is it acts as an enzyme to break down that ozone and so we had the hole in the ozone layer you're probably familiar with that it would have gotten larger if we didn't do something to stop it and so in 1989 the Montreal Protocol was put forward as a way to limit CFCs in our, on our planet. So if we look at the amounts of ozone on this graph, this is going to be right near the surface of the Earth. We're going to have large amounts near the surface, and it's going to drop off, and then we're going to have large amounts as we go you know, kilometers away from the surface. This near the bottom is called tropospheric ozone. This is that bad ozone. It can create smog, also leads to lung irritation, can lead to things like lung cancer. As we move farther and farther up, we get into the stratospheric ozone. That's the ozone we're talking about. This is the ozone layer, large amounts of ozone high in the atmosphere. It's this O3 molecule. It doesn't start as an O3 molecule. We basically have a bunch of regular oxygen, diatomic oxygen. It's hit by ultraviolet radiation, and it breaks it apart into two atoms of oxygen. This free atom of oxygen bonds to diatomic oxygen, and now we've got our ozone. That's how it's formed. We need the radiation to form the ozone. It's also how it breaks down. So if it's hit by another bit of UV radiation, then it breaks out again, and now we're doing this cycle. We're doing this cycle of solar formation when we take regular oxygen, hit it with a photon, break it into these free atoms, which then bond to another oxygen atom to make ozone, and then we have solar breakdown. That's when we have the ozone, it's hit with a photon, we break it down, and then we make that good old-fashioned oxygen again. And so it's a nice cycle. As long as the sun is shining, we're going to have ozone. And the importance of ozone is protection. So if we look at the amount of UV radiation, it moves right through those layers in our atmosphere. UV, UVB is mostly filtered out and UVC is completely filtered out. And you might think, why is that? Well, it has to do with the wavelength of that radiation. Um, thankfully, the radiation's wavelength fits that oxygen bond. It's able to break it apart and it's able to make that ozone. Now, the problem is we started producing things like chlorofluorocarbons. What is a chlorofluorocarbon? If we just break down the word, it's three chlorine atoms. 
So that's the chloro part. We then have the fluoro part, so it's one fluorine atom, and then we have a carbon atom. And what happens when chlorofluorocarbons are hit by radiation is it breaks off a chlorine atom. Now watch what happens to that chlorine atom. It grabbed one of the atoms from an ozone. So if we look at the atmosphere, we've got a lot of ozone at this point, but now that we've freed up that chlorine, it grabs another one, it grabs another one, it grabs another one, and so what it's doing is it's breaking down all that ozone. It's acting as an enzyme. It's not consumed in the reaction, it simply breaks down the ozone. And one chlorine atom can break down 100,000 ozone atoms, and so it goes really, really quickly. And that led to the ozone hole. Now why is that ozone hole found on the pole? Remember, there's gonna be an area where we're not having a lot of light. There's not a lot of radiation, so we can't build that ozone back up. And so we started to see it here first, but it would have spread across the whole planet. And so what humans did is they got together and they formed the Montreal Protocol. It's a treaty that all of these countries were signing and they said we have to stop using these CFCs. And so if you look at where we were headed with the amount of CFCs we were producing, things in Freon for example, aerosols for example, we were leading to a destruction of the ozone layer. But thanks to the Montreal Protocol we've dropped off the amount of CFCs in the environment and over time that ozone is going to build itself up again. And so did you learn the following? Could you pause the video at this point and fill in the blanks? Well, let me do it for you. Ozone, remember, is O3 rather than O2. It mostly filters out UVC radiation, but also filters some of the UVB. This is ozone found in the stratosphere, or stratospheric ozone. CFCs release chlorine, which form the ozone hole. Thankfully, the, the Montreal Protocol uh, helped to avoid that. And the misconception you want to avoid is that we're not talking about tropospheric ozone, this polluting ozone near the atmosphere. We're talking about that protective, good ozone high in the atmosphere and I hope that was helpful.